We're now really gonna dig into the solo model, talk about it, and show how we get to this steady state of capital. So our solo model is the capital per labor ratio down here on the horizontal axis. And then we're gonna look at overall investment and our savings, right? That's what the actual investment is versus the amount of investment N plus delta times K that's needed to stay in our overall steady state. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we're gonna to wanna to draw is we're gonna to wanna to draw this N plus delta times K. So this is my N plus delta times K. Remember, this is the level, I'm gonna actually write this out for you. This is the level of investment needed to stay in the steady state. That's what that is. It's the level of investment needed to stay in steady state. And the reason why is because we're looking at the capital that needs to go towards the growth rate of population. So think of this as the new people coming into the economy. They need to get a sewing machine or whatever we're using as capital. And we also have to replace the depreciated amount of capital. So that's the level that we need to stay in steady state. Well, what's the actual level of investment? Well, the actual level of investment is the savings rate because savings equals investment. And what's the savings rate? It's S, our savings rate, times our overall output, which we know is A times F of K. This is equal to our level of investment, which we're denoting as a lowercase i. So this right here, again, let me write this out for you. This is the actual level of investment when we're in equilibrium because savings equals investment. So what we can what we can assume and what we can know here is when the actual level is equal to the needed level, we will have what we call our K star. In this case, this is our steady state. This is our steady state of capital. We can look at what would happen if we're at one side or the other. So let's go ahead and look at if we're down here. Right, let's call this... Uh, Let's say like this is KT prime, right? Let's say this is KT with a prime on it. So we'll just look at one way and we go up here and what do we notice, right? We notice that this point where it runs into here, this is N plus delta multiplied by this level of KT prime, which is the amount that's needed to stay in steady state. That's the amount that's needed to, again, replace the new individual or give the new individuals capital and replace the depreciated amount of capital. Whereas this point up here, this is right that level of I prime, right? That's the amount of actual investment. So what we notice is we have more investment, right? We have more I than needed. So what makes sense here is we'll see K start to grow. And you'll see that the difference between here is actually how much this K is gonna grow for the next period because I have more investment into capital than what's needed. And so that's gonna start growing and everything's gonna start growing all the way back until we get to, till we converge, right? This is the idea of convergence, till we converge to the steady state level of capital. And when you look at the exact same thing, but on the other side, right? What happens if we're over here? Let's call this KT uh, double prime. So a different level of capital, but you notice that this level of capital is higher, right? This level of capital is higher than the steady state. What do we notice? Well, we notice the level of actual investment, here's my I double prime, is lower than what we would need to stay in steady state. So this is my N plus delta KT prime, or double prime, sorry. And so what we see here, right, there's not enough investment. There's not enough investment. There's We need to have this amount up here. We only have this amount. 
So what does that mean? That means that we're going to not be able to replace all the depreciated capital or we're not going to be able to give the new people as much capital. So my capital per worker is going to start to fall, right? Again, we're going to start to fall and we're going to converge again back towards that steady state. So if we don't see any other changes, we just see that we're out of steady state, it's going to automatically converge, right? We're going to auto converge back to this K star. And that's this whole idea of the steady state. So if we do have a change, which we're gonna look at next, right? Let's say that you have some sort of change in, I don't know, the savings rate, the population growth rate, um, you know, let's say we have a change in the overall level of technology, anything like that, something's going to shift here in this graph and we will be away from steady state and it's going to converge automatically to another one.